Is Mark Cavendish the greatest sprinter of all time? Who doesn't love cycling? Everyone when young had this love for their cycle and being a regular to it. Well, we're talking about the good old days, aren't we? Speaking of which, do you people know about or can you guess who is or who can be the greatest sprinter of all time? Well, welcome back to Cycling Right Now, you all. And today, we'll be talking about Mark Cavendish as well as, well, is he or is he not the greatest sprinter of all time? You decide, and you can let us know in the comment section below after the video. So, without any further delay, let us get started. Mark Cavendish's victory in the fourth stage of the Tour de France this year was one of the most difficult of his career. The day was marked by a massive crash, a late bike change, blistering heat, and an injury to a teammate. That's what Jeremy Whittle stated in the previous week's edition of The Guardian, but it was also the one that established a precedent. Those who had written off Cavendish's career after years of illness and poor form were proven wrong when he tied Eddie Merck's record of 34 stage wins in the Tour de France. Tadej Polgakar, the current holder of the yellow jersey and the defending champion of the Tour de France, commented on the accomplishments of the 36-year-old rider by saying, what he's doing now is crazy. He deserves our utmost regard. According to David Walsh's article in the Times from a year ago, Cavendish was close to quitting because he was worn down by despair and the Epstein-Barr virus, which causes glandular fever. He hadn't won a stage of the tour since 2016, and he wasn't even scheduled to be competing this year. He surprised everyone by coming in second place overall. The sole reason Cavendish was chosen for the D. Cuny Quick Stop Squad was that Sam Bennett, the team's original sprinter, was injured. According to Daniel Matthews of the Daily Mail, this incredible comeback reached its climax on Friday in Carcassonne. Cavendish finished the race after 220 grueling kilometers and a chaotic climax in which his teammate, Michael Mirkiv, nearly finished ahead of him. Cavendish eventually made it to the finish line. Cavendish was too exhausted to walk or talk as he hobbled to the cameras that were waiting for him. Because of his unwavering commitment to improving, he's widely regarded as the best sprinter in history. Cavendish himself admitted in a note-perfect press conference that he does not bear comparison with Belgian legend Eddie Merckx. Merckx is considered the greatest all-around cyclist the sport has ever seen and one who has become like Lord Voldemort at this race, he who shall not be named, according to Tom Carey in the Daily Telegraph. Cavendish has admitted that he does not really bear comparison with Merckx. Cavendish, who is now 36 years old, is without a doubt the finest sprinter the sport has ever seen, as it's now possible to state unequivocally. You also wouldn't put money on him not breaking the stage record before the end of this tour. So is it possible for him to set a new record? Cavendish has two more opportunities during the Tour de France to bring his total number of stage victories to 35, as noted by Walsh in the Times. The previous better part of a week of grueling stages in the Pyrenees was endured by Cavendish. The first will occur on Friday during Stage 19, which is a 207-kilometer flat race from Moonrex to Libourne. According to the race description, this stage should favor the sprinters unless a breakaway can cling on. The second will take place in Stage 21, which is unofficially dubbed the World Championship of Sprinters. The race starts in Chateau and ends in Paris after 108.4 kilometers of competition, with the final sprint taking place down the Champs-Élysées. According to David Hughes, who works for iNews, this course served Cavendish well in the past, as evidenced by the fact that he won four stages in a row between 2009 and 2012, when the Manx missile was at his near unbeatable prime. The Life and Work of Cavendish Cavendish's career has been marked by triumph in the face of the unexpected at every stage, from triumph in the Commonwealth to an unforeseen break while on the road. Cavendish's career has been defined by triumph in the face of that unexpected. It was under his leadership that Team Great Britain won the World Championships in both 2005 and 2008, and Rob Hales and Bradley Wiggins were key members of the team. In 2006, he continued to show his allegiance to the Isle of Man by participating in the men's scratch race at the Commonwealth Games. As a result of his efforts, he was awarded the gold medal, which he took back with him to the Isle of Man. He added that it had been 20 years since the team had last won a gold medal at the time that the statement was made. At the end of the day, the only thing that truly matters is that I'm racing in the bike races, and as long as I'm doing that, I'll be content, said the writer. Cavendish competed in the Tour de France for the first time in 2007, and the following year he won four of the race's 21 stages. In 2005, he was victorious in the road races known as the Tour of Britain and the Tour of Berlin. Both of these competitions take place on the roads. Cavendish, who was the only member of his team to not bring home a medal from the Olympics in 2008, claimed to the observer, there's nothing for me to do on the track now. His decision to race for Team Great Britain rather than the Tour de France is what he considers to be his biggest mistake. 
since he made that choice, the outcome of which has been that he placed the majority of his focus on road racing. Over the subsequent three years, Cavendish won a total of 16 stages of the Tour de France, collecting his first green points in 2011. In the same year, he is recognized for his achievements in the sporting world by being awarded the MBE, as well as the title of Sports Personality of the Year. The fact that he was able to maintain his dominance throughout the world's most renowned sprinting contests provided further evidence that he's among the very finest sprinters in the world. In the 2012 Tour de France, he won the stage that took place on the champs élysées while he was sporting the rainbow jersey. This achievement went down in the annals of cycling history. Whether I'm competing or practicing, I make it a point to gaze down at these rainbow bands once every few minutes, and every time I do, I'm filled with an enormous feeling of pride, he added. It doesn't matter if I'm competing or practicing. I do this regardless. All I want to do is give credit to the jersey, he said. That's all I want. In 2016, he accomplished another first for himself when he was granted the opportunity to wear the yellow jersey. The sprinter went from being strong to becoming even stronger, eventually winning his gold medal at the 2016 Olympics. However, in April 2017, he was diagnosed with Epstein-Barr virus, which began to hold his career. According to Peter Smith of Sky Sports, over the subsequent two years, he battled illness and tiredness, with injuries and wrecks adding to the difficulty of the situation. Cavendish has been passed over for participation in the Tour de France for the past two years in a row, and there's been widespread conjecture that he may hang up his wheels after the snub of 2020. Smith observes that the resurgence of his career has been one of the most heartwarming tales of the year. As a result of the Manx man's victories in the Tour of Turkey and the Tour of Belgium, he was able to get back into his old flow. Now onlookers are waiting to see if he can shatter Merckx's record and establish a new groove, and actually make sure that he is better than Merckx after all. It'll be a tall task, but we'll see if the man is up for it. Hey, I think we just about have come to the end of today's video. We sincerely hope you enjoyed watching our video for today, and we're going to be back with more updates just like this, so make sure you please continue to watch our videos and please support us. Make sure you share our video with all your friends and family and any other cycling fans that you may know of that'll get a kick out of the videos and the information we bring to you. Do you have any comments for us, any questions, any type of feedback, or maybe even requests about the topics of future videos? Feel free to leave it below for us in the comment section down below. We always love to check in and check in with you because you are our viewers and without you we wouldn't be here. Make sure you hit that bell icon on your way out the door as well. That way you are always notified of our latest updates and uploads. We always have new material coming to our channel. Check out all of our YouTube videos that we have for you. We got plenty of videos specially selected just for you to check out. Again, like, share, and subscribe. And thank you for spending time out of your busy day to hang out with us today. We hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in our next video.